was not until 1967 that the history of Jerusalem was to come full circle. In the Six-Day War, after Arab attack, the Israeli army stormed the old city of Jerusalem. They swept aside the opposing forces and took it for the Jewish state. For the sake of peace, the Israelis handed the Temple Mount back to the Muslims. But after 2,000 years of exile, the Jewish people now held Jerusalem again. It is the feast of Passover. At the Western Wall, the faithful gather to celebrate one of the most important Jewish festivals. They are commemorating the night that Moses led the Jewish people from their first exile in Egypt, and the start of their long journey back to the Promised Land, to Jerusalem. The scrolls of the Torah, the ancient Hebrew Bible, are raised above the worshippers' heads. It is in this holy book that the Jewish people can find God's promise that this is their home. The notion of Jerusalem in all its glory is synonymous with the notion of the Jewish people in all their glory. They are inseparable. But Jerusalem is not only central to the Orthodox Jews. Every time I walk here, I'm reminded of the stories of our prophets, the stories of our forefathers and foremothers. The beauty now is we can come back here and, and retell the story and feel it again, feel it and smell it and touch it again in ways we couldn't for centuries. Naomi Kelman lived in Jerusalem as a child when the Arabs still held the old city. Only after the Six-Day War was she able to walk its streets. You walk throughout the city and you walk our ancient history and you live our modern history and they are totally intermingling. It is on a Friday afternoon that Jerusalem takes on its most unique character. This is the beginning of Shabbat, the Jewish Sabbath, or day of rest, which runs from sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday. As sundown approaches, the traders in the Jewish markets begin to shut up their stalls. The rules of Shabbat are strict. There are 39 different categories of work that a Jew may not undertake on the Sabbath. Driving a car or a bus is one of them. All around the city, the faithful ready themselves to pray. At sunset, the Israeli public transportation system will shut down. The announcement, the commencement of Shabbat, the siren goes off, so all of Jerusalem hears it, and now it's time to stop doing any type of creative work. In the areas where the most Orthodox Jews live, roadblocks go up. Nowhere on earth are the principles of Jewish religious law taken so seriously. But the laws of God and the desires of man do not always match, even in Jerusalem. There are many secular Jews who wish to drive on the Sabbath. The Bar Elan Road is one of Jerusalem's major thoroughfares, but it also runs through one of the city's most orthodox Jewish areas. Many of the ultra-orthodox want this road closed on the Sabbath, but the city authorities refuse to do so. 
this is increasingly becoming uh, a challenge. How can we as Jews live together in this city? The ultra-Orthodox feel compelled to impress their lifestyle on their neighbors, regardless what their neighbor's lifestyle is. Can't there be one place in the world where Sabbath is really Sabbath, where the Jewish Sabbath is, exists in the context of the world, and if there's going to be such a place, is that place not Jerusalem? But the growing ultra-Orthodox population of Jerusalem is exerting more and more influence. For them, the Moshiach, the Jewish Messiah, will not come until all of the world's Jews have congregated in this, their promised land. As the Jewish population expands, new homes, entire new suburbs of Jerusalem, steadily rise on the surrounding hills. This has become a cause of bitter resentment. For the Palestinians, we live in the city. It is not only the holiness and special significance of Jerusalem and Islam that's important for us. This is where I lived. This is where, I, where my father was born. This is where my great-grandfather born. We just take it back to the seventh century. It's our identity. It's our history. It's our family archive. It is who I am. Assalamu alaikum. Walid Ayad is a Palestinian born in Arab East Jerusalem. At the time of the Six-Day War, he was studying in California. The Israeli army took over his family home. Thirty years later, he has returned. His home may be the same, but Walid has returned to a different Jerusalem. The borders of Jerusalem have been changed many times, but most dramatically after the Six-Day War. From his rooftop, Walid can see the Golden Dome of the Rock less than a mile away. But his home is no longer part of the city. As a Palestinian, he is no longer guaranteed entry. Whenever political tensions rise, the Israelis close the borders between the city and the Arab areas outside. I came all the way from California, 8,000 miles, to go to Jerusalem, to go to my homeland, crossing oceans, continents, airports, you name it. The last mile is the hardest one. My permit clearly states I cannot go into closed areas. Jerusalem is a city at the heart of the bitter conflict. The streets are patrolled day and night by Israeli soldiers. Jerusalem is cold. It seems almost ironical, the city of peace. It was never a peaceful place, never. Never in its history was it a peaceful place. The conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians appears intractable. Under the gaze of the world's press, skirmishes and fights between Arab youths and Israeli soldiers, hardly any older, have occurred repeatedly in and around Jerusalem. Over the past three decades, there have been violent incidents on and around the Temple Mount, involving radicals from various groups. <laughs> Jewish extremists have threatened to break into the area and on a number of occasions have succeeded. At other times, Muslims have thrown stones and boulders down onto the Western Wall. Israeli police and soldiers have moved in, firing tear gas and, on occasion, live ammunition. The sense of paranoia and distrust is rarely allowed to fade. If you demolish the three holy places of Jerusalem, you'll get three holy craters in the ground. People will come there and they will, will fight each other over the position of the crater. Nothing will be basically changed. 
The city lives on the edge of instability. There are checkpoints on every road in and out of Arab areas outside Jerusalem. Cars are stopped, checked. Every Palestinian has to have the correct papers or they will not be allowed into the city. For Shireen to pray at the Dome of the Rock, she has to pass through two separate Israeli checkpoints. If you have someone who has not permission, who has not the ID, or someone who forget his ID, someone forget his ID in big trouble, in real trouble, just because he forgot it. This become like, I hate the ID. I hate to show it. I hate the colors of the ID. I'm not fundamentalist. I'm just the one who tried to live in peace and with my dignity. That's all. I can't, I can't, I can't understand someone treat me, humiliate me or humiliate anyone I know. We just have four or five bumper suicide and we all punished. <laughs> Suicide bombings are the latest escalation in Palestinian terrorism. They have claimed more than a hundred lives in Jerusalem in the course of a single year. Horrific and almost impossible to defend against, they only perpetuate an atmosphere of violence and terror. In the Talmud, it is written that God created ten parts of beauty. Nine were bestowed on Jerusalem, and only one to the rest of the world. But it is also said that God then created ten parts of pain, and God also bestowed nine of these on Jerusalem. The gates of the Haram al-Sharif swing shut. The doors of the Holy Sepulchre are locked for the night. By the Western Wall, the Israelis celebrate their return to Jerusalem. In this city, above all others, Man has strived to touch the eternal, to talk with God. It's amazing how we can live in one city which has so many different groups and almost never talk to one another. When we live so close to each other in the state of political conflict, the proximity makes us lose sight of how similar we all are. Peoples, races, nations pass and die, flee and return. It seems that only the stones of Jerusalem remain constant and unyielding. Only they and the power of their holiness can outlast the passing millennia. Can truly touch the eternal. watching discussion topics and activity and resources for Jerusalem history of the Holy Land are up next on assignment discovery
Now that you've seen Jerusalem, History of the Holy Land, Part 2, talk about this. Think about Jerusalem's history and discuss the current conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. What are some ways to bring about peace in this region that experiences violence on a daily basis? Consider the viewpoints of Christians, Jews, and Muslims living in Jerusalem. Now, try this. Write a radio script for an interview with a Jewish citizen of Israel. Discuss the creation of the State of Israel, the Six-Day War, and the current state of Palestinian-Israeli relations. For videos, CD-ROMs, lesson plans, and teacher resources on this topic and more, log on to discoveryschool.com. To learn more, Assignment Discovery suggests Jerusalem at the Time of Jesus by David Van Bema. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company.